The river is everywhere at the same time, at the source and at the mouth, at the waterfall, at the bridge, at the current, in the ocean and in the mountains, everywhere, and that the present only exists for it, not the shadow of the past, nor the shadow of the future. Life is also a river. In this video I actually will show you some of the basic mountain biking trials techniques. Techniques you can use on your everyday ride, but also if you want to ride trials or just for you to manage all the difficulties you get in traffic each day. Techniques will include balancing, getting up and down obstacles or over them, bunny hopping and wheeling. And everything starts out with the basics, you know. You have to control your bike, you have to be comfortable with your bike. You should try to be one with your bike. So the bike does exactly the move you want it to do. If I take my finger and put it on my nose, it goes on my nose. The same thing should happen if I take my front tire and, and lift it on a rock, it should land exactly on that spot. <laughs> Okay, today I'm here with my first student and trust me, if he can learn those tricks, you can do too. So let me introduce you, Mr. Chicks. Welcome. Give me five, Mr. Chicks. Thank you. How's it going? How you like your bike? Yeah, like a musician learns his notes and a bike trial rider learns certain moves and of course you have to, like a musician has to play his notes in the right order, you have to do the moves in the right order. So timing is very crucial. So at the beginning it's, you have to kind of program all the moves in your head step by step and, and but after a while you will do them automatically. But at the beginning, once you manage how to do a certain move, you should really stop and analyze it and think about it. and hammer it into your head, okay, first front wheel up, then the weight over and so on, and then after a while you can do it in your sleep. It's very important that you can trust your bike and that everything is set up right and correct and that you don't have to worry about your bike in the middle of a move. So make sure your bike is dialed in, make sure your chain doesn't skip, your gears are adjusted right, everything is tight. So. 
you have to trust your equipment. This is a regular mountain bike, although I use a fairly small frame for my body size so I can maneuver the bike better. But the main thing is you want to put your seat down so it's out of your way. The other thing is I have this chain tensioner here that tensions the chain so it doesn't come off as easy when you ride over bumpy things or when you hop around. And I use the BMX style pedals. Um, people always ask, how can you lift your back wheel up with those pedals without flip? But that's something I will show you later. And the other thing is the rock ring I'm using. This gives me a little more ground clearance because I took my biggest chain ring off. Then I have my brakes dialed in really well. That's really important that your brakes work with one or maximum two fingers. You always kind of want to grab your brake lever on the outside. You have a little more leverage out there. Tire pressure is actually pretty much a regular pressure. I run about 38 pounds in there, which is the normal pressure. When I balance or do any tricks, I always have the same foot forward. I call it the chocolate foot. It's your dominant foot. And that's the foot you're using when your cranks are horizontal, you have that pedal forward. Um, the way to figure out which one is your dominant foot is just like you're trying it out. You roll along slowly and see with which pedal forward you feel more comfortable. And if there's really no difference, then it will come automatically after a while. position would be basically this. You have your, your crank arms horizontal again, your, your chocolate foot forward. You turn your handlebar about 45 degrees to whichever side you feel comfortable, but you twist your upper body parallel to your handlebars. Very important is my, my center of gravity, my body is like way over my front hub. It's very far forward. See this? And my legs and arms are pretty much stretched, so I have a solid contact to my bike. And and you just basically whip forwards and backwards the whole time. You never have perfect balance, so you always plus minus balance yeah. points, see? You can use your brakes or use your pedals a little bit to whip forwards and backwards. I'm kind of, another trick might be to look a little bit forward. Look at a point maybe five or six feet ahead of you. And that way it's much calmer. It's like when you hold a full cup of coffee and you always look at it, it's like swapping over. But if you look straight ahead, it's much calmer. Did you get that, Mr. Jakes? All right, to get accustomed to the perfect position, you can either lean your front wheel against something, that way it's easier to counterbalance, and you can try out different positions of your body. You have to analyze what works best for you and remember that then. Or you can have a friend hold you and you can shift your body back and forward. You can hold you on the seat, for example. Okay, so try to ride as slow as possible and before you lose your balance, you're gonna pedal again. All right, that's it. Try to ride a straight line. <laughs> All right. All right. Good one. The way to do it goes, you try to go as slow as possible, and as soon as you lose your control, you pedal a little bit again. So you're trying to ride a circle. Try figure eight, get tighter and tighter each all time. All That's way. how you get a feeling all for the bike. All all the Perfect, calm, oh, good, God. see? All right, good. see? You try to ride a circle, get tighter and tighter each time. <laughs> all right, 
good one. <laughs> Cow do. All right, we learn the cow hop the next time. This time it's the bunny hop. Where are all the bunnies? Where's all the bunnies when we need them? The next technique we'll be jumping into is the bunny hop. This move is not too difficult to master and it can be used in many situations to avoid an obstacle, to jump over a root, rut, or whatever might be in your way. First, we have to learn how to get your rear wheel off the ground without your toe clips. It's actually very simple. Instead of just lifting up your feet, you do the opposite. You push your feet down, back and up in one dynamic motion. So your feet always stick to the pedals and you're pushing your feet away from your body. The first exercise is to stand up on your bike, your crank's horizontal, your rear pedal toe is almost pointing to the ground. Now you roll along at approximately running speed not touching your brakes and just try to lift up your rear wheel to get used to this new and unnatural move. The next step would be you lay a small stick on the ground then you try to lift your front wheel over the stick by just pulling on your handlebars. As soon as your front wheel lands on the other side of the stick, you unweight your rear end and pull your back wheel up. This is a great exercise to get a feeling for your bike and to practice the timing. Now you can try the real thing. You start out doing several small hops, lifting both wheels at the same time. Explosively you push your handlebars and feet first down to the ground and then you jump immediately up with your bike, uh, making bike and body as one. Remember to have your weight centered, your head over the handlebar, your cranks horizontal and your toe of your rear foot is kind of pointing to the ground. The front end comes up by just pulling straight on your handlebars. For the rear end, your footwork is most important. Also, everything is supported by the rebound of your tires. Once you, once you succeed with your first hops, you intensify the whole move and do everything harder, faster and even more explosive. Your airtime should be as short as possible to have more control. In other words, you want to take off as late as possible and land immediately after this. The right speed is important. The faster you go, the faster you have to react. Also, make sure the landing path is clear before you take off and make sure your handlebars are straight before you land again so you don't do one of those. <laughs> Try to absorb the landing with your knees and with your arms like a cat. You know, being smooth is the ultimate goal. Now you can practice your bunny hops on your everyday ride, jumping over small and safe obstacles like lumps of grass, like little sticks, like mud puddles, or even a pile of cow dung.
Alright, let's take a look at some techniques on how to get down. There's of course different ways and different techniques you gotta learn and the better you get, the more techniques you will have and of course there's, there's certain options you get, you know, the better you get, the more options you have. A good rider can maybe ride over a rock that's in the middle of the trail, another a beginner might still have to go around. It always seems to be the easiest part, but it takes a lot of concentration and it can be as tiring as going up the hill. So always be prepared, be focused and know your own limits. Okay, remember the important points when you go downhill. Hold your hands about straight, put your seat down, stand up on your pedals, have your pedals horizontal, put your weight back slightly behind your seat and find the ideal lane for your front wheel. The back wheel will follow automatically. Use your brakes, you can use your front brake and your rear brake. Just be really careful on your brakes, you know. Use them with a lot of touch and feeling. You know, as soon as you start sliding, open your brake up for a split second so your wheels start rolling again. If you go down a long steep trail and, and it looks so difficult that you rather want to get off your bike because it looks so gnarly and, and your eyes are already at the bottom of the trail, but if you if you cut that section into small pieces and do one at a time, you know, you're down there before you know it without getting off your bike. Don't focus on the danger, you know. Focus on your ideal line. Focus on what you want to do and not on what, what you not want to do. It's, it's a very mental game riding mountain bikes, especially if you get into extreme terrain. And so you want to always picture the movement right before you do them. You want to picture them in your head. You want to see them. If you're not sure how to do it, don't even start it. The most dangerous thing is interrupting a move in the middle of it. With all the technology today and all the full suspension and suspended bikes, and your body is still the best suspension, you know, absorb the shocks, you know, go with the go with the crown, you know, if there's a hole, go with it. Absorb it. Use use your arms and legs. Okay, another technique we call it tripoding. It's a technique when it gets pretty technical and you don't want to get off your bike but you're not sure if you can do it either. And in that technique you put one foot on the ground and it's always the foot on the hillside. You put on the ground and drag with you while you ride down. You put your weight behind the seat. Never sit on your top two. Rather walk. Put your weight, weight way back on your tire. Use your brakes and walk your way basically down the hill while you ride and you can steer the bike and that way you know once it gets too steep or you lose control you can either steer into the side of the hill or you can let the bike go and get off in the back of the bike and that way you don't flip over your handlebars every situation in the environment is different so it's hard to generalize techniques so you always have to kind of adopt and change your technique and use it according to the environment. If the environment allows it, you know, approach the problem from a right angle. Hold your hands about straight. And sometimes you get to a situation where if you would ride down that drop in, you would hit your chain rings on the object or you would flip over your handlebars. And if the step is not too high, maybe up to a foot or so, what you can do is right when your front wheel rolls over the edge, you can like hop forward and land your front wheel like a bit away from the obstacle. That, that way the angle of the landing is smoother and you can ride it out easier, you know. That as soon you land, you have to put your weight backwards, of course, so you don't flip over the handlebars. This technique is, is easy to learn. You can even learn it on a curve. More difficult is it when you have to ride off a drop-off in the wheelie style. That means when it gets too high to ride down, you want to wheelie off. I've jumped off from three meters before, up to 10, 11, 12 feet, and landed the bike and didn't do any damage to the bike. But you have to learn those moves on small obstacles. And the way to get started is, you stand with the front wheel at the edge, and you have your bad pedal forward. The gear you're using is approximately a low chain ring in the front and one of the middle rings in the back. Then you do half a pedal stroke until your back wheel is at the edge, but all the way at the edge. Don't stop in between as soon your front wheel gets in the air, you know, because then it goes straight down as soon you stop pedaling and you crash. So you want to be at the edge, ready to roll off the edge with your back wheel 
and get down and pull on your handlebar the whole time while you ride out there and then absorb the shock with your knees and your whole body when, once you land and touch down. That should help you to jump off the edge of the world. There's a lot of different techniques how to get up and over things and some of the basic ones I want to teach you today. They're really simple once you know how to do them. I've been able to ride my bike up 60 inches high obstacles and when you go on your everyday ride a lot of times you encounter roots, rocks, ruts or little logs in your way and sometimes it's actually easier to ride over them than to avoid them and that's what I want to teach you today. The basics we learned in the previous chapter, how to bunny hop, that's where we learned how to unweight your back end without your toe lift, just like lifting it up with your feet. And that same technique is really important again when you want to unweight your back end to get up onto an obstacle. To do that, you don't want your cranny gear, you know. People always think, oh, in trials you need a low gear, but that's not really the case. You need like a medium kind of a gear. A lot of times you're on a trail ride and you go uphill and there comes a little step, a water bar or a root or a little obstacle on the course. And these obstacles are usually much easier to conquer than they seem because all you have to do is unweight your bike at the right time and just keep pedaling over them. Almost pretend like they're not even there. Smaller obstacles, if you go like only at slow speed, it's enough if you just lift your front wheel on the obstacle. You don't have to necessarily lift it all the way over. Same counts for the back wheel. Let's take a look at this. If you have an obstacle like one feet or a feet and a half high, you can use that technique, the so-called top technique. So approach it in a right angle, put your front wheel on it, hop forward, hop, land your front wheel away from the obstacle, and land your back wheel on the obstacle. People always ask, how can you lift up your back wheel without toe clips or clip pedals? And the basic idea behind it is you do the opposite. Instead of lifting your feet up, you push your feet down, back and up in one dynamic motion. And that way you always have contact to the bike and you can actually steer the bike and direct it in the direction you want and it always sticks with you. Once we get up at higher steps, we need to use a slightly different technique. And it's something for advanced riders, but again, you can practice it on low obstacles, like on a curb or something, and then take it into a higher situation. You approach the obstacle with medium speed, with your bad pedal forward. Right before the obstacle, you do a wheelie and do half a pedal stroke. So once your front wheel lands on the obstacle, your good foot, your job that foot, remember, is on top of the obstacle, ready to unweight the back end. Before your chain ring or your back wheel hits the obstacle, you want to unweight your back wheel. 
That means you want to throw your weight forward on your handlebar and lift at the same time with your feet, your back end up. So basically, you roll on your front wheel forward until your back wheel is on the obstacle. And then you're on there and you can continue riding. Man, New Zealand sheep are better than others. Why? We don't know yet. Okay, last but not least, I will show you how to ride a wheelie. If you ever try to pull one off, you probably know that it's much harder than it looks. But with a little time and training invested, I can show you a few pointers which will make it much easier to learn it. Two things are important, to find the balance point and to develop a feeling for your rear brake because you always have one thing on your rear brake and as soon as you go too far over, you just touch your rear brake and you automatically come forward. So the way you get started on the wheelie is simple. You, you choose a gear which is not too light and not too hard because if the gear is too light you just spin and you don't get anywhere and if it's too hard it's really fast to keep up with the speed and then the way you start you roll in like running speed and you have one of your pedals up almost vertical and you push down at the same time you pull up on your handlebar and as soon as you get up you lean back and you keep pedaling and immediately you have to start counterbalance your balance the trick is you constantly have one finger on that brake and you always pull the brake and you just pull it a little bit then you come a little bit forward not all the way down and if you come too far down you just pedal a little harder and pull on your bars again and for the sideways balance you just use your handlebars and your arms and your knees you go sideways out and I even turn my foot on the pedal sometimes sideways out to recuperate the balance but important is to correct before it's really necessary. Be ready to jump off the bag if you have to and get a feeling for that because it's the mistake most people do, they don't lift their front wheel up high enough. A good way to learn it is if you learn it on a little uphill slope. You are my best student, yes, now you have to go out and learn, yes, you just practice. Remember everything I told you. And next time we do more, say goodbye. Bye. 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 Yes, so just remember, you have to concentrate each time you go riding now. Yes, yes, and always be careful, yeah, wear your helmet, yes, okay, goodbye. Bye.
Knowledge can be communicated, but not wisdom. Last but not least, I will show you how to ride a wheelie. You probably, um, okay. Ready and action. Last but not least, I will show you how to ride a wheelie. It looks much easier than it is, um, but... But be a little lively. Ready and go. All right, last but not least, I will show you how to ride a wheelie. If you ever try to pull one off, you probably know that it's much harder than it looks. But it's actually not so bad, and I will show you how to do one right now. It takes a lot of... <laughs> um, it's also... Uh, once you know how to ride a wheelie, it will also... Um, okay, like open up the screen a little wider then, make it, you know, a little angle. Middle of the screen. Ready and action. All right, last but not least, I will show you how to ride a wheelie. It's probably... Stop it. I cannot like do it when you oh, like go for it.